Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Hello everyone. Today we are about to start a new series that is basic biostatistics. We know that in biostatistics, we deal with a lot of numbers, which are our data. It is of utmost importance that we understand what kind of data or numbers we are working with and also what are the a uh, suitable biostatistical test which are applicable for the given data set. So that is why in today's video, we are going to talk about the data, the different types of data. To start with, we must always remember that the word data is a plural word <clears throat> and the singular for the word data is datum. So that is why data was collected or data was analyzed is a wrong statement. Whereas the correct statement would be data were analyzed or data were collected. So this is a very common mistake that we come across whenever we review the synopsis for thesis or dissertation or even short studies or projects of our students, be it a undergraduate student or postgraduate student. So please remember that data is a plural words. That is why data were collected, data were analyzed are the correct statement. So what do you mean by data? Data is nothing but observation. So the observations made on the subjects one after another is known as raw data and data consists of discrete observations of attributes or events that carry little meaning when they considered alone. Let me give you an example. Suppose you are talking about a class where we have 200 students. Now the teacher decides to measure the blood pressure of individual student. At the end of the day, he has 200 systolic blood pressure and 200 diastolic blood pressure. So basically, he has 400 different numbers. These numbers themselves mean nothing. They are meaningless. That is why data need to be transformed into information. So the, all these 400 numbers he had, that was his data set. And these numbers mean nothing. So that is why he is going to transform this data set into some meaningful information. Whenever data undergo statistical processing, organization, reduction or summarization that become meaningful information. So in this case, in this example, since he has the blood pressure of individual student, he can classify the student according to the blood pressure into three different groups. Normotensive, that means students having normal blood pressure hypertensive that means students having high blood pressure and prehypertension which is in between normal tension and hypertension based on this information uh, certain management can be done people having hypertension may need to do lifestyle modification dietary modification and even then if the blood pressure is not controlled they can go for medication Whereas people belonging to pre-hypertension range, they can start with dietary modification and uh, lifestyle modification. So that is how we can say that even information uh, that we are getting uh, can be used or utilized for the betterment of the subjects. Now coming to the classification of data. We have different and many classifications of data, but I believe these three classifications are must know for the students. That means students must understand these three different classifications. And only after you understand the these classifications, especially the last two, that is uh, qualitative and quantitative, also continuous and discrete, based on this classification, you will have to use different kind of statistical test. So that is why it is very important that we understand what kind of data we are dealing with, whether we are dealing with qualitative data or quantitative data, 
or we are dealing with continuous data or discrete data act based on that we are going to select our statistical test so here we are going to discuss three different classification so the first classification is primary versus secondary data which is based on the source of data primary data are those data which were collected by the researcher himself whereas secondary data are the data already collected by someone else and are used by another researcher let me give you an example suppose i want to know that uh, how many of my students are hypertensive i just gave you this example minutes ago if i measure the blood pressure of individual student all by myself then this data is primary data now if you remember when students get admission in a medical college or dental college or even nursing college i believe all the students undergo certain kind of medical examination after the counseling procedure so that means somewhere we have all the records uh, mentioning the blood pressure of individual student because someone else during the medical examination measured the blood pressure of the students if i am the researcher and i can get my hands on all those records where the blood pressure of individual students are mentioned from that record itself i can also tell which students of mine are hypertensive but since i am not measuring the blood pressure myself rather someone else measured it it is actually a secondary data so what i am doing here is i am reviewing the record this is known as record review so that is why this is a secondary data the next classification is qualitative and quantitative data now when a particular variable cannot be measured but is expressed in frequency that is known as qualitative data whereas in quantitative data both the characteristic and the frequency of the variable can be measured qualitative data are non numerical data and also known as enumeration data whereas quantitative data are numerical data because they can be measured and they are also known as measurement data so the difference is, is in case of quantitative data the variable or the characteristic of the variable can be measured in qualitative data the variable or their characteristic cannot be measured in both qualitative and quantitative data the frequency can be measured now i think it is better that i give an example so this is my first example suppose in a class we have 150 students and out of those 150 students there are 80 boys and 70 girls so what is the variable we are dealing here that is the gender of the students so either boys or girls now the characteristic of the gender can they be measured so can you measure the boy or girl can any unit be given to boys and girls if i say boys are one girls are two that does not make any sense but what we can do is we can measure their frequency so how many boys are there that can be measured how many girls are there that can be measured so here the variable itself that means the boys and the girls they cannot be measured <clears throat> but their frequencies can be measured so that is why this is a qualitative data coming to the next example here we have seen uh, actually we have interviewed 100 mothers with children and asked them how many children they have so what is the variable we are dealing with the number of children mothers have so number of children that is the variable whenever we are saying number of children this variable can be measured so we can have one child or two children 3 4 5 6 7 8 so innumerable number of children is possible right we have clubbed uh, three and more children into one uh, so basically child, uh, mothers having three children four children five children all are considered as three or more number of children so this variable the number of children can be measured right so we can have one child or two children or three or more children also how many mothers have one child how many mothers have two children or how many mothers have three or more children 
that can also be measured so the frequencies can also be measured we can see here that 45 mothers had one child 35 mothers had two children and 20 mothers had three or more number of children so in this example since the variable that is the number of children can be measured also their frequencies that means how many mothers have one child or two children or three or more children that can also be measured this become my quantitative data another example i have taken the body weight of 100 students and i have seen that 15 students had body weight in between 60 to 70 kg so some of them had 61 kg some of them had 63 kg 65 68 70 like this all right 45 students had body weight in between 70 to 80 kg 35 students had body weight in between 80 to 90 kg and 5 students had body weight in between 90 to 100 kg what is the variable we are dealing with the body weight of student of course body weight of any person can be measured so the characteristic of the variable can be measured also the number of students that means the frequency here we can say how many of the students had body weight in between 60 to 70 kg so these frequencies can also be measured so that is why this is a quantitative data we just have to remember that frequency can be measured in both quantitative as well as qualitative data but the variable or the characteristic of the variable can only be measured in case of quantitative data coming to the third classification which is continuous versus discrete data continuous data are those data for which an unlimited number of possible values exist for example height weight blood pressure blood sugar serum cholesterol what are discrete data discrete data are those data for which a limited number of possible values exist for example heart rate respiratory rate number of students etc so let me give you an example <clears throat> now suppose we are talking about uh, height or rather weight let us talk about body weight so any value is possible like we can have 45 kg we can have 50 kg we can also have 52.75 kg if we want we can have 68.35 kg so decimals are also possible right odds events decimals every number is possible similarly serum cholesterol we can have serum cholesterol level of 120 180 197.4 so even decimals or every possible number is uh, is is a probability so that is why these are considered as continuous data what about discrete data we have limited number of possible values for example heart rate we know that heart normal heart rate is in between 60 to 100 less than 60 is known as bradycardia more than 100 is known as tachycardia so we can have suppose you're talking about normal range we can have a heart rate of 70 per minute we can have heart rate of 90 per minute can we have a heart rate of 72.85 so that is not possible decimals are not possible here also respiratory rate respiratory rate can be say 14 per minute 18 per minute 20 per minute but we cannot have a respiratory rate of 18.56 similarly the number of students suppose in a class i take the attendance so out of 200 students we have 150 students present today we can have 130 students we can have 180 students but we can never have 147.65 number of students so as you can see uh, unlimited number of values is not possible in case of discrete data so this is the difference now if i ask you if blood pressure is continuous or discrete right so whenever we measure blood pressure we get values like uh, 120 by 80 140 by 90 136 by 84 like this so we always get numbers in uh, even number right we do not get 127 or 125 or 83 or 73 like that we only get the odd values 
I am sorry, we only get the even values, not the odd values. Also, we never get blood pressure in decimals. We will never see that we have a blood pressure of 124.76, not possible. So even then, I am telling you that blood pressure is continuous, although I am not getting all possible numbers. Why is that? My answer will be, we measure blood pressure using speakbo manometer. It can be a mercury speakbo or aneroid. And these instruments are calibrated in such a way that we get only even numbers, not the odd numbers. This is the reason we always get the blood pressure in even numbers. So this is a limitation of the instrument itself, not blood pressure. There are digital blood pressure machines which can give you blood pressure even in odd numbers. So 135 by 75 is possible when we are using uh, digital machines. So as you can see, uh, we can also get blood pressure in odd numbers. Similarly, uh, if you ask me, uh, we don't get blood pressure in decimals. Now again, that is the limitation of the instrument that we use. The blood pressure, the actual blood pressure, if it could be measured and the machines were calibrated even uh, up to the decimal level. In that case, we would have got the blood pressure in decimals also. So remember, all possible values of blood pressure uh, can be obtained. But since we do not have well calibrated machines, or rather the calibration is, is done in such a way that we cannot get all the values, it is the limitation of the machine itself, not blood pressure. So that is why blood pressure also remains uh, a continuous data. Now you can ask me uh, whether unlimited number of possible values are actually possible. For example, can we have a blood pressure of say 750 by 250? So systolic is 750 and diastolic is 250. We never come across any patient who has this absurd amount of blood pressure, right? So always remember when the definition says data for which unlimited number of possible values exist. This means unlimited number of possible values in a given uh, range, in a given rational range. All right. So having a 700 of systolic or 300 of diastolic is not rational. It is not possible. So we can have systolic up to 200, even more than 200. We can have diastolic up to 120, even more than 120. So we have to consider a range and within that range, any value is possible, right? Similarly, blood sugar. Suppose you're talking about postprandial blood sugar. The blood sugar can be as low as 70, 60, 50 and can be as high as 700, 800. But we will never come across a patient who has postprandial blood sugar of 5000. Not possible. So always remember this unlimited number of possible values are within a given rational range. Similarly, in discrete data, and this has to be within a rational range. And whether in a given rational range, we can have all unlimited number of values or we cannot have unlimited number of values, depending on that, we can say if the data is a continuous data or a discrete data. So I hope you understand the different classifications. That means what is a primary data, what is a secondary data also what is a quantitative data and what is a qualitative data, what is continuous data, what is discrete data, because you need to understand this classification so as to select the appropriate biostatistical test for your study. With this, we conclude today's session. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates, juniors and friends from other college. You also have our Facebook page. The link is given in the description. Thank you, take care and we shall see you in our next video.